Hey everybody, welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And I'm Carly Bird. And we've made it to week five. Five weeks in a row. We are on August 24th. Carly, how many days until Halloween do we have? 68 days till Halloween. We are 68 days away from Halloween. Um, and I wanted to like, first off, real quick, before we get into the meat of it, thank everybody. Based on Buzzsprout's analytics, we are the fastest growing podcast in the Halloween horror genre. We have over 70 downloads in less than a week, which is absolutely amazing. In like three days, actually. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. And I'd like to thank everybody that's actually made this a reality. We are going to have a bunch of announcements at the end of this podcast, um, but we don't want to bore you guys with all that detail. You're not here for us. You're here for the stories. So last thing before we get started is what are we drinking tonight? Tonight, we are drinking Jack's Hard Pressed Ciders. It's actually really good. It is actually extremely good. It is a, I, th I believe it's a local cider, but um, with every episode, we are going to have a list of this in the description where you can buy it. It is a actually a little bit more refreshing than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be a lot more tart. The flavor is it, great. It's it, just yeah. sweet enough. And honestly, I, I really appreciate the fact that each can is only 100 calories, which doesn't make me feel super guilty about drinking it. Absolutely. Yeah. I was, I was a little worried, like, you know, trying to watch what we have for our wedding. Um, but hundred calories, fantastic flavor. Who knew? Um, so with that, no further ado, time now for the tale of Slender Man, what lurks in the woods. Oh. It was a camping trip we had all been waiting for. There were four of us, me, Eli, Jacob, Mike, and Derek. Oh no. Before we got to the access point, Jacob and Derek quickly got busy building the canoes with our gear, while Mick and I went to go buy some extra ice for our coolers. When everything was ready to go, we launched ourselves from the beach and began paddling. The mood changed quickly as we realized that there that we were there, we were up against it for some reason the wind had picked up considerably creating choppy waters that took a lot of effort to paddle through by the time we had reached the second part of our journey it was nearly sundown i was really getting nervous but to, but i looked at jacob to speak and make a decision i asked him like what do you want to do here the sun's already starting to set we definitely are not going to make it to our campsite tonight. I think we should just take the loss. Let's set up camp somewhere else on maybe another open site on the next lake over. Derek was hesitant. How do we know all those campsites are not already booked? It is Labor Day weekend, and this place usually gets heavy traffic. I mean, someone could show up and kick us out, and we'd really won't want to have to like set up twice. I decided to intervene. It could happen, but there's lots of sites on this lake. I'm with Jacob. I don't think we have a choice. Okay, so there are four guys. They're canoeing down a river mm -hmm. to a campsite. That's, that's all we know, and it's Labor Day weekend, right? It's Labor Day weekend, yeah. Okay, all right, keep going. I decided to intervene. It could happen, but there's a lot of sights on this lake. I'm with Jacob. I don't think we have a choice. We can't navigate in the dark. We all came to the agreement that we need to find a new camping site, and fast. Oddly enough, we began to paddle through the next lake when we noticed that every camping site was empty. Being a holiday weekend, this threw us off. Okay, that's really weird. Yeah, that's really weird. A camping site is good, especially if it's like right now, 2021 or 2020 during COVID. Everybody does camp. Like everybody does nothing except for camp. Everybody buys a camper and goes camping now because they don't want to stay at a hotel because, ooh, coronavirus. Mm -hmm. it's, it's creepy. 
something seemed ominous to me, but I let it slide. I attributed the lack of a fellow campers to the unexpected high winds. They must have just delayed their trips until the water calmed down. I mean, the storm was a little bit unexpected. We found a good sight and quickly jumped out of the canoes without a word being spoken. We split up and started to prepare the night for the night. Mick set up, set up the hoist. That way we could keep all of our food off the ground in case any weird animals were looking around. Derek went further into the woods to chop some firewood, and Jacob and I started to piece together the tent and tarp. 30 minutes later, we were ready to go, and Jacob broke out some sausages to cook over the fire while we cracked open a few cold ones and lit up the bong. Good job, Jacob. Yeah, really good call, dude. We were a few beers in and a few hits in, enjoying some good conversations when Jacob interrupted. What, what the heck? I swear I just saw something moving on the, on the, about 90 feet into the woods. What the, f what, what was that thing? You're just really drunk, man. At worst, it's a deer or something. Mick was eager just to settle the mood. Dude, no, I'm serious. Whatever it was, it was standing on two feet and was definitely not just a deer. It looked about 10 feet tall. Dude, what the heck was that thing? Screw that. I'm going to check it out. I highly doubt there's anything out there. This is a classic Derek move. An expert troll, the three of us knew exactly what he wanted to do. He was going to run off into the woods, mess around, just long enough to get us anxious and make us try to find him, only for us to return to the campfire with him awaiting our arrival. Ah, so Derek's the clown. Derek's the clown. Got it. Derek's also retarded. <laughs> After 30 minutes, that's exactly what happened. I was the only one who broke. I ushered Jacob and Mick to come with me. They grumbled and were pissed off and complained, but eventually followed suit. I figured the sooner we, we gave in to Derek's troll, the sooner we could be back around the campfire just enjoying the evening. We grabbed the flashlights we had packed away and began the hunt. It seemed so ridiculous, but deep down I thought it was sort of fun. About 15 minutes in, that fun wore away. Guys, I, I don't think Derek would put us through this. Something's gone wrong. I, I think he got lost. Yo, Derek. Ha ha ha. The joke's over, dude. Real funny. I yelled half jokingly, trying not to get too scared. A few seconds after that, I finished my sentence. A faint scream broke the silence. I'm not going to lie, I was terrified. I started trembling a little bit. The way I heard that scream, it just pierced a part of me. We all looked at each other with a grave concern before Jacob had decided he had enough. Fuck this, I'm going back to the campsite. He strolled. He probably is laughing his rear... <laughs> He's probably really laughing his ass off, thinking how terrified we were. I'm not going to entertain this anymore. I'm going back to the fire. Soon enough, he'll come back, and he'll have learned that we ain't going to give this antics any more shit. <laughs> Clearly, based on how this was written, you're <laughs> high and fucking drunk, because that's how this was written. He just went real country on you. Welcome to Race Virginia. Well, at least we know where this is from. Jacob was pretty was pretty clear about his intentions. Nick agreed and didn't seem too interested in looking any further. I was so terrified that I just wanted to stay with the other guys. So we started back towards the fire, feeling slightly uneasy, but you know, no worse for the wear. Derek would come back. That's when I made a mistake. This, this feeling in the back of my head. This uneasy feeling like something was watching kept creeping into my mind. And at that moment, I turned back and flashing my light into the deep, dark woods, I saw it. Only for a split second before it dashed behind a tree, <laughs> but it was unmistakable. Just as Jacob had described, whatever this thing was, it was freakishly tall. I, I couldn't make out if it had a face or not, but... 
<laughs> no, we're drunk. That's what it is. I'm just seeing things. I was frozen, though. I, c I couldn't move. I flashed the light on my arms to see nothing but goosebumps. My mind was racing with every possibility. Settling on the horror that Derek could... No. No, I, I can't think about that right now. I forced myself to speak up. Hold up. Hey guys, hold up. I saw something. I swear I'm not messing around. It was just as you described, Jacob. Tall, really, like really fucking tall. But if it... What about Derek? No, no. We're, we're drunk and we're high. That's what it is. That's what it has to be. This is dumb. I think we're all just drunk and high and in the need of, of to sleep it off. Derek is doing his thing and he'll come back soon. Like we said, he'll probably be back at the fire when we return. Nick was doing his best to keep us calm. If not for him and Jacob, I don't know whether we would have survived that night. When we got back to the fire, it had already died down, but that wasn't the worst part. There was no sign of Derek. Mm -hmm. When I realized he was still gone, my heart sank. I was torn. On one hand, I was fed up with Derek's trolling and just wanted to sleep it all off and forget it tonight. On the other hand, I was truly terrified that whatever Jacob and I had seen, what? No, no, I, I can't let my mind go there. Let's just get in the tent and try to get some sleep. Derek has a flashlight and he knows how to get back here. It's only been an hour. He's probably up in a tree listening to some music or something. And we'll come back after we fall asleep to freak us all out. We'll laugh it off in the morning and have some breakfast. We've still got two days to explore and have a good time. So let's just try to relax. Jacob had clearly calmed down a lot. And the way he ensured us really made it easier for us to climb into that tent and try to sleep it off. Hmm. So they're just thinking best case scenario. Derek's fine. Even though we all know Derek's don't make good decisions. Yeah, and apparently um, these guys are so high as fuck. They're probably thinking like, listen, I saw something. It doesn't matter. Like, I get it. Like, we've all been there. Like where you're like, your mind's not hundred percent. You're in the woods. It's like, is this real? Is it not real? But plus I'm around with all my friends. I'm not going to be that guy that like Wait, freaks everything out. I'm just going to chill. Yeah, exactly. Play exactly. Cool. I don't really know how, but I managed to doze off pretty quickly. I guess the combination of fear, stress, fatigue had taken its toll. I slowly passed into that other warm old dream when all of a sudden I awoke what was that what was that sound I woke to, to what I had to think were, were footsteps approaching my heart started to beat faster and faster Cadence was so calm, so methodical. Pop, pop. Just one foot after another, plodding on the ground, getting closer. Wasn't slowing down, wasn't speeding up, just continuously gaining closer. That's when I also realized that all the sounds of the forest died. No bugs, birds, nothing. It was like everything had vacated. I gently poked Jacob's arm, which proved enough to wake him up. In his half-asleep state, he looked up at me. What? What? All this happened in the space of ten seconds. And by then, the footsteps were much closer to the tent. Jacob now understood what was going on. I didn't need to explain anything. We stared at each other in abject terror as the footsteps got closer and closer. I could tell we both had the same idea. It's gotta, it's gotta be Derek. 
I remembered him by breath. If it's not Derek, it's that ten foot tall creature closing in. Our hearts all fell. Footsteps were now coming from just outside the tent. Pop. Pop. Then all of a sudden they stopped. Jacob rang out. Nice try, Derek. Nice try. You got us. We're still awake. Come into the bed. We're done. His tone was nervous. There was no reply. The figures just stood over top of the tent silhouetted by the moonlight. Complete silence fell. I thought my heart was going to explode out of my chest. Whatever lay outside was now right beside our tent. For a few more seconds, the most eerie silence remained. Not a living thing seemed to be around. Then all of a sudden... The guttural scream of a banshee broke out of the calm. The type of scream that could wake the dead and split your soul in twain. This blood-curdling, ear-piercing noise woke up Mike. Jolting him awake, the three of us looked on in terror at this creature, at this thing that stood towering over top our tent. We begged and were worried to each of us that this might be the last moment alive. The screaming insisted. After a while, it started to shake our tent. We couldn't formulate words, nor could any of us mutter the courage to move an inch. Run! We waited and waited. After what seemed like hours, the shaking finally stopped. The screaming didn't. But it was getting further and further away. Like a flame slowly dimming into the night. I had no idea what stopped it from entering our tent, but I'm eternally grateful for whatever it was. After a few more minutes, the screaming was reduced to such a faint whimper in the distance. It remained throughout the night. None of us said a word to each other. We we insisted. We tried to figure out what to do, but none of us had the courage to move from that spot that we were in. After several hours, light pierced the horizon. By now, it was daytime. The screaming had stopped. Mick cried out in a raspy voice. So who wants to go outside first? Jacob called out, let's go together? I think so. We stuck our head out to see nothing. Thank God the creature's gone, Mick said. But our hearts shrank. There were no footprints outside the tent where it was. Not a beating of a, not a breaking of a twig. Not a brush of a bush. Whatever it was came and gone without a trace. Weird. I think, uh, let's pack up our stuff and get out of the park. When we arrive back at the main entry point, we'll put in a missing persons report for Derek. Everyone agreed to this idea, and once we started paddling back, I started to reflect on the events. Still, there were no other campers to be seen. That's when we saw it. Jacob saw it first. What's that over there, in the water? Swinging my eyes, it would look like it was a log, bobbing motionless in the water on the other side of the lake. As we paddled closer, it was becoming clear that it wasn't a log. At once, we were right up alongside it. I couldn't contain myself. I threw up into the water uncontrollably at what we assumed is what was left of Derek. Ew. We waited in silence for a moment before paddling back as fast as possible to the ex- correction point. That was the last time I ever went out in the woods. This was the tale of Slender Man. Okay, why didn't they bring Derek's body back? I I think fear. 
I honestly think fear. Because I would have assumed if he was like a really good friend, you'd be like, Derek, put him in the boat. Let's go. So your whole thought would be like, hey, listen, get his ass in the boat. It's a dead body. It's fine. We're not going to freak the fuck out about everything that happened. I don't know. You're like, just get his body. <laughs> I don't know. They were talking about getting a missing persons report, but I don't need one because you got Derek. <laughs> Oh, Derek, why do they do this? I, yeah, this is the second story that we've had where Derek has been um, making a thing. some poor decisions. Don't go out in the woods alone. Don't nope. go out with just weed and alcohol. Listen, if you're going to break the law, don't just do it with weed and alcohol. Bring a gun. Yeah. Just do the trifecta. Bring a gun out More there. More than a 22. We learned that from podcast number three. What would you do? What would you do in that situation? In that situation, honestly, if the screaming started, I probably would have just like gotten out of the tent and run. But apparently that wouldn't have saved my life. I probably would have gotten me killed. But just yeah. make like So you would have been a Karen. No, because if something's right outside your tent, this little piece of fabric isn't what's keeping you alive. But there's safety from that fabric. Do you not know the power of the tent fabric? No, I have no idea what the power is. And besides, whatever it is, ain't going to try to kill three people at one time. Yes, Clearly, it will. It, it, if it's a 10-foot tall, faceless goblin, yeah, it's going to slice all the throats at one time with one swift flicker of the fingers. Really? Just the flicker of the fingers? We, yeah, because you said like their fingers are sharp. So, ching, 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 three throats. Done. But why, but why didn't it? We'll never know. Uh, personally, I think they did the right thing. In every horror movie ever, stay together. It doesn't hurt you when you're together. True, true. It it fears group. Okay. Whatever okay. it is, it fears groups. So I, I think in that sense, they did the right thing. I think okay. the issue they had was they split up. Whether it's this or the Wendigo. Oh, uh, yeah. So like Derek left the group, hence. Derek got fucked. Derek got slayed. Yep. I think that's what really the main thing is. But that's a good story. That's a really good story. That's a great story. Thank you for reading that. No, absolutely. And um, yep, yeah, that was the tale of Cinderman. So just to wrap up for today, Carly, do you have any announcements? <gasps> we have an Instagram. <gasps> we have an Instagram now, ladies and gentlemen. It is called Spirits and Ghost Stories. No underscores or anything special. It's just all one word. Spirits and Ghost Stories. Instagram. <laughs> Find us. It's got the same icon as our YouTube channel, so it should be easy to spot. And final notes and nuggets for today. Uh, we are going to have a countdown clock starting on th starting on the 1st of September for Halloween. So every day there's going to be a post about Halloween on our Instagram page, along with other notes about our channel. Um, I, again, please email us any ideas of future topics. Also, things you'd like us to improve on the show. Please yell at us. Please berate us. The first person to email us will get a gift card to Amazon, by the way. The second person will get a gift card, and so will the third. The amount will be varied depending on whether you're first, second, or third. But that is out there. This uh, little game is good through September 1st just to get this ball rolling. Yeah, calm down with the advertisements. I just wanted to give our last little update before we end our show. Um, we just spent the last weekend working on the mural. I need another good, solid 24 hours on this baby before we can finally reveal the finished product. It's coming along very nicely. I think everyone's going to be very pleased. It's, um, I don't want to give too much away, but it is, it's more like a, uh, sculpture even. So it, I really, really hope everybody enjoys it one more weekend and hopefully, well, that'll be on camera next week. Yep. We're getting close guys. Uh, again, thank you for everybody. Um, we are over 70 subscribers or 70 downloads in a very short period of time, less than a week. It's amazing. I am truly honored. We both are to be one of the fastest growing, you know, horror Halloween podcasts in the world right now. And it's because of you guys. And I really appreciate that. So until next time, I'm Thomas Aarons. I'm Carly Bird. And this was Spirits and Ghost Stories.
Later, everybody. Bye, guys.